like your words. <laughs> and uh, this poem is called Ocean Song. My first relationship was not my idea. And it wasn't his idea, even though his brown-haired head was full of them. It was our classmates. It was drama one where we sat near enough to each other that people thought they would be cute together. Both nerdy, both theater geeks, both lovers of video games and academia. I wasn't aware of the planning. I lived my life like a fish going with flows up and down rivers. I got caught up in this current of loving him because everyone expected me to love him. I never assumed I'd be in a relationship. My life has been spent around computers and books more than people. I bounce from wave to wave of different realities in the pages and screens. All I ever wanted was to swim away from here. And then the undertow swept me to him. And it wasn't a bad wave to follow. He let me have the space that I never wanted to give up. And I let him flood my life in a way he never intended. But most often, seeing each other at school would be all we needed to do with each other for the month. My first kiss wasn't my idea. And it wasn't his idea, although he didn't object to it. It was an offhand comment at a cast dinner at Village Inn. It was him leaving early, a friend's glance at the door, a cluster of stares, and whispers like rushing water. It was the words, what? You're just going to let him leave? The current of loving him lasted two years. I never realized before then how I hadn't ever really decided to be in a relationship with him, how even when we were together, I was thinking more about how others would talk about what a good couple we were instead of thinking about us in that moment. My life was nothing if not a constant search for validation. I had stranded myself in the shallows trying to find my way out, but he never noticed the sandbars I was stuck on. It never hit me that he left for college. Never really felt like a change. The day he texted me that I was his everything from 50 miles away after three months of not seeing each other, I didn't believe it. I didn't want to. I spent that afternoon avoiding my reply, wondering if it was worth it to be someone's everything when I wasn't even my own. I could feel the churn of whirlpools around me pulling me back towards shore. I hadn't noticed I had begun to drift off to the call of open waters in his absence. The day I told him I couldn't do it anymore, salt water threatened to drown my words in flowing language, keeping the edges soft and the temperature warm so that even when I tried to say goodbye and I'm sorry, it only sounded like come find me again. Someday you will follow the sound of my voice like a siren song that I did not make on my own to where the rocks are sharpest and my throat is sorest, where I will wish you every happiness. Come find me waiting for you. I can't help but ask, if I pulled him under the wave's crest myself, or if it was only the thought of me. Did I grab his hand and whisper to him, dive deep, deeper than you know you can, where you will find me in the pulse of the ocean floor? Or did he launch into the waters himself after seeing my reflection there? Mm -hmm.